en question. Please be seated. Le président, veuillez vous asseoir. For this morning session, the chamber will hear Ce matin, the medical expert on their assessment of fitness to stand trial of the accused. Concernant la aptitude des accusés and à être as jugés. president of the trial chamber on, and on behalf of the bench, en tant que président et au nom de l'ensemble like de la chambre, je souhaite la bienvenue à l'accusation, co-prosecutors, counsels for the defense of Monti and Kirsten Paul, civil parties and civil party lawyers and civil lawyers for civil parties and for Everyone in les avocats and des parties civiles, les parties civiles elles-mêmes, ainsi que toutes les personnes présentes dans le prétoire aux alentours. Je prie le greffe de faire rapport sur la présence proceedings. des parties à l'audience. And in fact, today we will have two uh, separate hearings. First, to hear the assessment by the medical expert on the finesse to stand trial of the accused. And the second part will be the continuation of the testimony of the civil party, Oum Sopani. Mr. President, for today's proceedings, all parties and individuals to today's proceedings are present in court. Nunti is present Nunti in the holding cell downstairs and she waived his right to be present in the courtroom. A waiver has been handed to the greffe. One national and one international medical expert as well as the civil party Um Zopani are present to be called by the chamber. The two experts Les deux experts states that through their best knowledge they have no relationship by blood or affiliation to any of the two accused, Nunti or Kiss and Porn, nor through any civil parties recognized by the chamber in this case. The two experts already took an oath. President, thank you. And this, mo this morning before we uh, commence the hearing, Avant the chamber has received a waiver la chambre signale qu'elle est saisie d'un document due to his health Nunchea. and he requests dans ce document to follow Nunchea the proceedings through a remote means from a holding cell downstairs la cellule temporaire aménagée and dans he le sous-sol understands about his waiver through his counsel l'accusé par le biais de son avocat a remis does not mean that he waived his right from a fair and just trial. Cela ne veut bien sûr nullement dire qu'il renonce à son droit à un procès équitable. And his waiver to be present in the courtroom is supported by a medical uh, report by the duty doctor at the ECC, which states that he has health problems and recommends that the chamber should allow him to follow the proceedings from the holding cell downstairs. And for that reason, the chamber grants Mr. Nunti's request la chambre fait droit à la to follow the proceedings from my holding cell downstairs through la cellule temporaire a remote means for today's proceedings. Et ce pour toute la journée. As he expressly waives his right to be present in the courtroom, and the AV unit, you are instructed to link the proceedings to the holding cell downstairs so that Nunti can follow it. Pour que and that applies for today's proceedings. 
depuis cet endroit durant le reste de la journée. Court officer, could you Monsieur assure the two medical experts into the medical. court room? President, Le President, on the 18th December 2014, the trial chamber, la chambre de première instance, held a fitness hearing for Nunji and Kisapon's fitness to stand trial, and in accordance with Rule 32 of the Internal Rules, the Chamber ordered an assessment health and psychological psychiatric assessment of the two accused for fitness to stand a trial, as well as to assess various requests for the appropriate scheduling of the trial. The Chamber ordered la chambre Expert a demandé a geriatrician au docteur Chang Kien Ming, Kien Ming un géiatre, et au docteur an expert psychiatrist to assess the accused on the 19 and 20 of January 2015 and prepare a report in English for each of the two accused, which shall be completed by 21st January 2015. As for the uh, translation, of the medical experts will be delivered to the Council for the Defense by 22nd. The experts delivered the report as instructed, and the Chamber advised that the information contained within the report so assist the Chamber to decide whether each of the accused is fitness to stand a trial. And in accordance with the uh, criteria, it by Stuttgart ce, en fonction des critères of the ICTY dans l'arrêt Strogar devant le TPIY. The expert medical report will present their report and will be questioned by the co-prosecutors, the civil party lead co-lawyers as well as the councils for the defense. And first of all, let me say good morning to the medical expert. And before that, we would like to briefly ask you uh, some questions. And first, I'd like to put question to Dr. Hood Lina. Doctor, is your name Hood Lina? Vous -vous Hood Lina? Answer, yes, Réponse. that is correct. Oui. Question, Question, can you tell the chamber your date of birth? Quelle est votre date de naissance? Answer, Réponse. I was born on the 5th of May 1963. Le 5 mai 1963. Question, where is Question. your current address? Où vous and uh, doctor, please be advised, uh, you should only respond Veuillez when the microphone is operational. Que votre micro soit allumé Answer, Réponse. my current address is at 291 Kampuchi Kram Boulevard, Mutapir, Phnom Penh. Phnom Penh. Question. 
According to the This oral report of the graduate just now, and to the best of your mm. knowledge, you have no relationship or affiliation with any of the two accused, avec, uh, namely Nunchi and Kyu Sampon, or through any of the civil parties admitted in case 002. Is that correct? C'est ce qui a été indiqué par le greffe. À votre connaissance, cela est-il exact And, uh, yes, La réponse est exacte. Questioned. Question. The oral report by the graffiti also stated that you have already taken an oath before appearing in the courtroom. Is that correct? Answer, yes, réponse, that is correct. Oui. Question. Question. Dr. Holina, is Dr. there any change Oudina, in your current position or occupation? Vos fonctions Previously, we uh, know that you are head of a psychiatry department of Khmer with Friendship Hospital, as well as professor of psychiatry at the University of Health Science. Y a-t-il eu un changement? Answer. Currently. I stopped working for two months with a permission from the Khmer with Friendship Hospital, and I worked at a psychiatric uh, clinic that is my own private clinic. However, I still engage in uh, teaching at the University of Health Science. Question. In February 2014, You were appointed by the chamber as an expert to assess the fitness of both accused, Nunchi and Kyu Sampon, and you appeared and testified before the chamber several times. Is there any change in relation to your qualification after the last latest examination of Nunchi and Kyu Sampon in March 2014? Answer. Réponse. After I made the assessment of the two accused, I further developed my career. I participated in various national and international workshops and seminars in order to increase my capacity. And as for the two accused that I examined, it is my observation that their mental state remains the same. Thank you, Doctor. Le président. And I'd Merci, like now to put questions to Dr. Chan Kin Ming. Chan Kin Ming pour lui poser des questions. Doctor, is uh, Chan Kin Ming your name? Is my pronunciation correct? Chan Kin Ming, est-ce que ma prononciation est bonne? Yes, Your Honor, it is correct. Réponse, oui. Question. Question. When were you born, Doctor? Quelle est votre date de naissance? I was born Réponse. on 21st November 1959. 1959. Question. And uh, what Quelle is your nationality? I'm a Singaporean. Réponse. Singapore citizen. Je suis citoyen de Singapour. Hey, sup? Question. And uh, where is your current address? Quel est votre domicile actuel? Réponse. My current address in Singapore à is uh, number six, Je réside au numéro 6 Road, de la route Glen Eagles Medical Center, Centre Medical X07-03. Question. And what is your Quelle occupation and where you practice your profession? Et où la pratiquez-vous? I'm a senior consultant, geriatrician, and I have my own private practice uh, in both Granny Girls Medical Center as well as Mount Alvernia Medical Center. 
dans I'm un autre centre médical. Consultant Je suis aussi consultant invité du département de gériatrie de l'hôpital général de Singapour. L'interprète signale qu'il n'a pas saisi le nom des deux établissements médicaux en question. Ah, okay. Question. According to the oral report of the graphic just now, du rapport to the base of your knowledge, do you have no relationship or affiliation with any of the accused, ou autre relation avec Nun Chi and Kiel Sampon, or to any of the civil parties admitted in case 002-02? Is that correct? Numéro 2 du dossier 002. Est -ce exact? That's correct, Your Honor. Réponse. C'est exact, Monsieur le Juge. Question. Also in the oral report, it stated that you have already taken an oath before appearing in the courtroom. Is that correct? Vous aviez prêté serment avant d'entrer dans le prétoire. Est-ce exact? That's correct, Your Honor. Réponse. C'est exact, Monsieur le Juge. Question. How long have you been practicing as a geriatrician? Combien de temps pratiquez-vous la profession de gériatre Réponse. I have been practicing as a geriatrician since 1988. La gériatrie depuis 1988. Cela fait, je pense, plus de 20 ans. I have done my training in Singapore. J'ai été formé à Singapour. And I have also been working for one year at the Victoria Geriatric Unit in Scotland. J'ai aussi travaillé un an à l'unité de gériatrie d'un hôpital écossais. That time when I was working there, I Et completed a diploma in geriatric medicine, which was conferred to me by the Royal College of Surgeons and Physicians, Glasgow. Et médecins de Glasgow. Thank you, Question. doctor. Merci, doctor. And since you are a geriatrician, vous êtes donc gériatre. Could you confirm that you are qualified in the fields of cardiology and neurology? Confirmer que vous possédez des compétences dans le domaine de la neurologie et de la cardiologie. Réponse. En tant que gériatre, nous sommes formés à tous les aspects de la santé des personnes âgées. So in the area of cardiology and neurology, I am able to make expert comments on these issues. Je suis en mesure de m'exprimer en qualité d'expert. Thank you. Le président. Merci. Before we proceed to the presentation of the expert report and the examination, the trial chamber wishes to inform Mr. Expert that during your presentation, as well as in response to the questions put to you by the trial chamber and the parties, you may choose to work together que vous pouvez décider de travailler ensemble basis, or on the mutual en vous partageant le travail selon des termes ou mutuellement convenus, ou encore l'un seul d'entre vous pourrait présenter le rapport ou encore répondre aux questions posées. In response to the questions put to you by the trial chamber and the parties, Quand vous serez interrogé if par the la questions are par of parties, general nature si and are not directing to any specific expert, one of you may respond to those questions vous, and the other may complement the answers or may resolve to remain silent. Compléter la réponse donnée ou encore ne rien ajouter du tout. During the brief presentation of the report and in response to the questions, both of you may decide who is going to present or respond. The trial chamber wishes to remind Mr. Experts that it is very important to speak slowly and in subsequent order to facilitate the official interpretation Mr. Experts are also asked to use as few technical, complicated terms as possible to make it clear and easy to understand. And Mr. Experts, you are among the three experts, including Mr. Sina Fazel, whom the trial chamber appointed in February 2014 to assess the fitness to stand a trial of Mr. Nunchir and Mr. Kiyo Samporn. 
Is that correct? Yes, exact. Bad, petit trum trum. The réponse, effectivement. Yes, that is correct. Le président. Thank you. Merci. And on the 18 December 2014. Rather, then your team prepared an assessment report related to Nunji and Kilsom Porn on 26 March 2014, as requested by the trial chamber. Has your team really carried out the assessment? Is bien exact? Yes, we did. Effectivement. And Le on président. 18 December 2014, the trial chamber appointed both of you to reassess the fitness to stand trial of Mr. Nunji and Kiyo Then from 19 to 20 Ensuite, January 2015, you 2015, examined medical conditions of Mr. Nunji and Mr. Kiyo Sumpon by consulting with the physicians who have treated Mr. Nunji and Mr. Kiyo Sumpon at Khmer Soviet Friendship Hospital. De Khmer Had you really done it? Est-ce bien exact? Answer, yes, we have. C'est exact. Le président. And on 21st January 2015, you made a joint report assessing the health of the two accused, Mr. Nuji and Kyo Sampon. Document E329-4 and E329-5. So as to respond to the trial chamber's request, have you really done it? Answer, yes, we have. Réponse, effectivement. Thank you. And before I hand the floor to Avant Judge Fens, who has been appointed Fens by the bench to put the questions to the two experts, experts, could you summarize the assessment finance report of the two accused? La de votre on their fitness to a stand trial and provide recommendations to the trial chamber on any treatments or cares sur des which are required to cope with the current medical conditions of the two accused. Your Honor, I'd like to Réponse. start first by moi qui uh, giving commencer. a summary on Mr. Nuccia's physical health and recommendations, de de and Nuccia, that will be Nuccia, followed by Dr. Hood, who will be commenting, giving a summary and commenting on his mental health. Fera état de de santé uh, when we visited uh, Mr. Nuccia uh, on two occasions during this uh, uh, 19th and 20th of January, we found that uh, physically he has not changed very much compared to the last time when we saw him, which was less than a year ago in March 2014. As usual, he was seated at the edge of his bed uh, with his hands holding on to his walking frame and his back was unsupported. He was cheerful, he has good eye contact when he spoke to us in a very loud and clear voice. He was able to answer our questions confidently. And in the physical examination, when I examined him, 
I found that his blood pressures, his vital signs, meaning his blood pressures, pulse rate, uh, respiratory rates were normal, and I have also reviewed his previous uh, uh, weekly reports, and they have also been normal. In relation to his uh, cerebral uh, neurological uh, system, we find that uh, there was no deterioration, his reflexes were normal, but there was some limitation when he raised his right leg. Uh, because of stiffness of his knees, his hip, as well as some back pain. Uh, I also have to note that he has a chronic back pain for a long time, which in the past has been confirmed by an x-ray showing multiple osteophytes. Osteophytes are basically wear and tear of the bones with abnormal calcifications around it and that could dig into the muscles and sometimes into the nerves causing the back pain that he has been complaining of uh, for a very long time. But he said that the pain is worse only when he changes position, uh, when he lies down, he could do so by himself, but with tolerable pain. But when he sits up, he needs help to pull him up, and that's where he complained of a bit more severe pain. But the pain would go away once he achieved his final position. The pain would go away in a very short time. We felt that his vision is relatively good in spite of, of uh, the left uh, cataract. Uh, that has not been removed gauche, since the, the last assessment. He was able to read with his right eye um, and he could look at his watch, he could read the names of uh, countries that were printed on the world map and on the globe which he has inside his room. Uh, he did complain about some noise in his ear a medical condition which we call tinnitus um, and this is associated usually with some dizziness especially when there is change in position of his head and um, that is something new compared to the last assessment we saw of him in March 2014 but the dizziness also lasted a short time once he achieved his uh, final position. So overall, my conclusion for Mr. Nutcher is that uh, his back pain is chronic and is not going to go away, but over time it may get worse as a result of the normal age degeneration. The dizziness is due to an age-related degeneration of the nerves in his ears, and again, it is unlikely to go away, and it may uh, further deteriorate and progress as he grows older. Uh, and being a frail man as he is, he is at risk of deconditioning with rapid decline of his physical function. So our recommendation was that he should continue with his physiotherapy once to twice a week so as to maintain his muscle mass and his limb dexterity and his functional status. Mr. President, Your Honours, I would like to make a 
Monsieur le Président, Mesdames et Messieurs, j'aimerais à présent présenter un résumé bref de l'état de santé mentale de M. examination, Suite à notre examen médical qui s'est étalé sur deux jours, nous avons pu constater que son état de santé mentale stable. est stable. In 2004, in en March 2004, From March 2004 until January 2014, it is less than one year we observed that his memory is still stable. L'année dernière et aujourd'hui, nous avons pu constater que ses capacités mnésiques sont restées stables. Nous avons également examiné sa capacité ou son aptitude à être jugé. And uh, we applied. Uh, Struga case, the uh, seven criteria, and after our examination, Struga. nothing has changed. He is able and he is fit to stand trial, as uh, we assessed uh, in the latest uh, report, in the last report. In particular, uh, Mr. Nunchia his mental condition is uh, good so he could participate in the trial proceedings bon, so this is my brief summary aux audiences voilà en quelques mots mon résumé de la situation president what about mr kyosan le président qu'en est-il de monsieur kyosan health condition Dr. Woodlina, thank you, Mr. President. Next, I would like to mention the development of a mental condition of Mr. Kyo Sampong. In March 2014, from that time, until January 2015, it is less than one year, as I said. The memory of uh, Mr. Kyosun Pon has not changed. Uh, it is stable. It is in good condition. And his fitness, his, whether he is fit to stand trial, we also apply the criteria of a Struga case. There are seven criteria. I, from my examination, I believe his mental condition is examen, uh, stable. He has the ability to participate in uh, the trial proceedings. And as for our recommendation in relation to mental condition, I believe his nothing mental, hinders his participation in the trial proceedings. Um, Your Honor, um, I would like to give a summary Monsieur on the juge, physical conditions of Mr. Kyu Sampon. Um, we visited him, I examined him on the 19th and 20th of January in his cell, and uh, during that time, on Dans both occasions when we arrived, Les deux he fois was nous venus lui visite, actually lying down in his bed, reading a book, lit, un livre. and upon knowing that we are here, Dès lors a su que he nous could là, sit up il um, in bed il all by himself lit, seul, while he awaited us uh, getting into the room and he was able to smile as he recognized our faces, but not our names. He was able to move around his room unassisted, moving from his bed to the table and to the bathroom and back. He was able to take hold of books and uh, files of documents to flip through to show us certain passages that he wanted us to read. Um, he spoke loudly, forcefully, uh, without 
any Fort slurring of speech. En phrase continue. Um, although he complained that his hearing had deteriorated, que son but it was adequate détériorée. for us to communicate with him, Mais even as we uh, spoke in a normal uh, tone. Même en um, ton, although uh, there were occasions when he leaned forward with his Toutefois, left ear moment, in front, presumably en uh, to listen to us uh, better. Apparemment pour mieux nous entendre. Um, he was able to read uh, sometimes without a magnifying glass, but there was certainly a magnifying glass uh, on a book that he was reading. Sur les était en train de lire, une on his physical examination, uh, we found that physique, at that point in time, his blood pressure was very normal, 130 over 70, and the pulse normal, rate was 70 per minute, also normal. Le pouls 70 and normal we également. know that he had just been discharged from the hospital with on bronchitis um, and hypertension, but we found that his blood pressure has normalized. Uh, examination of his chest also showed that his uh, lungs were clear, and we reviewed his X-rays at the Khmer uh, Soviet Friendship Hospital and the last X-ray before his discharge was clear, was normal. Um, during the time of, uh, of our interview, he was in good spirits, maintaining that he was only uh, a little tired. Um, we know that he does have a history of chronic backache, and uh, in chronique. view of his age, we would also expect that his backache can worsen over time because of age. Que, and um, ces mots se, he has uh, two histories of uh, strokes before. Il a également eu uh, therefore, deux our recommendation is that his blood pressures will need to be monitored Donc, il closely faut because sa pression uh, high blood pressure and his age is unknown risk factors for uh, another stroke. Un de risque, but overall, we felt that there's nothing in his physical um, examination that would affect Cardiac his ability Donc, to stand trial. Nous pas au uh, that's my report, Mr. President. Quoi que ce soit qui l'empêcherait, euh, qui entraverait son aptitude à être jugé. Président, thank you. Le président, Ec Mr. Merci. Experts, next, uh, I would Merci, like to hand over the floor to Judge Friends, Je donne à présent la parole à la juge Friends, to put specific questions to the two experts on behalf of the chamber. You may now have the floor, Judge chamber. You may now have the floor, Judge Friends. Madame la juge, vous avez la parole. Thank you, President. Good morning. Monsieur le Président, merci. Mesdames et Messieurs, uh, bonjour. I will first shortly raise yesterday afternoon's incident. Commencer par I'll then, parler and this de is more for the benefit of the public, walk you very summarily Puis ensuite, très brièvement, uh, through the remainder of the report, je vais um, le and reste then ask questions some of them while we are going, some of them at Je the end. Au fur et à poser cette question, so, puis as about de questions à la fin de yesterday rapport. afternoon's incident, are you aware y a eu un incident. that there was another incident, meaning we had to adjourn early, que nous because um, Chris and Pang was no longer Monsieur able to uh, follow proceedings. Yes, uh, we were briefly informed that there was such oui, an nous incident. Avons été informés brièvement Are you in possession incident? of the report Question. of the Avez -vous doctor, le du doctor made at that time? Été dressé hier suite à incident? No, Your Honor. Réponse. Non, Madame le juge. Then I would perhaps suggest we, we have received the report only Madame la juge very Fence. recently, so Nous perhaps we can le rapport que give très the Khmer version, and my understanding is there is only a Khmer version Khmer. Il me semble of this very short report en Khmer de ce to the experts, one of them experts. speaks Khmer. L'un des experts parle en Khmer. Je pense qu'il ne lui faudra qu'une ou deux minutes pour en prendre connaissance. 
included into the overall assessment. Ainsi, on pourra en tenir compte dans l'évaluation globale so, de l'état de santé. While this is being done, I'll just shortly inform Bien, the public what else besides seeing Mungchi and documents, Chris and Pang yourself you have done. Revient uh, before you reach the conclusions. Vous êtes parvenu à la con à now all the parties are in possession of Toutes the parties full report, so I will be very brief and sum up. I'll start Dans with leur intégralité, pourquoi je serai bref. You have also looked at vous vous êtes the history également sur of the. Do you wish me to give you a couple of minutes to read? Yeah. 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 Minutes yeah. 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 What is nine uh, saturation? I'll ask you anyway to shortly summarize this report for the benefit of everybody. But I would first, as I said, want to make a couple of additional remarks on how you uh, reached your conclusions. And I'll start out with Nunchia. You had a look at his medical history. You stated that he has had hypertension over 30 years and ischemic heart disease in 1995. What is this in late terms? Une maladie uh, cardiaque ischémique. Uh, ischémic uh, heart que ça disease veut dire? is uh, just meant that he has a weak heart. Dans la réponse, uh, veut dire que son cœur est faible. Um, moderate kidney insufficiency. Vous parlez également d'insuffisance uh, rénale modérée et vous parlez également d'un AVC. Uh, he suffered a stroke in 1998. And question. Uh, you then de additionally, so obviously talking and to outre. himself, you consulted vous with avez parlé, uh, mais doctors, vous avez aussi treating doctors at the Khmer Soviet Friendship Hospital, where he has regular uh, checkups. They basically reported that he was slow in walking, but nothing else extraordinary. You then consulted with consulté, the detention facilities, treating doctors, who mentioned occasional dizziness, du centre de no significant complaints from Nunchia. You consulted de, with detention staff, de de who also Nunchia. said they, they felt he seems weak and when he walks. They also mentioned the dizziness. Nunchia himself assessed himself as Monsieur Nunchia a dit qu'il se sentait ou s'est évalué lui-même comme plus faible. Then, when it comes to mental health, that was about physical health. The same organizations for bodies were consulted. Vous avez consulté les mêmes organismes. Les médecins traitants de l'hôpital de l'admitié Khmero-Soviétique n'ont fait état d'aucun problème spécifique. La concentration a été évaluée comme normale. Le chef de l'établissement de détention ainsi que le personnel du centre de détention n'ont pas non plus remarqué quoi que ce soit. Ensuite, nous avons tous vu les conclusions. Nunchia's memory and cognitive Vous function will be gradually deteriorate further with aging. You therefore recommend regular refuse in the future. So my first question is how often should this refuse take place? C'est-à-dire des examens réguliers. Comment suggérez-vous que ces examens réguliers soient organisés en partant du principe qu'il n'y aura pas d'incident d'ici là? À quelle fréquence?
The recommendation for the refuse is the last page. C'est euh, au dernier paragraphe de votre évolu of, uh, évaluation que vous parlez des, de la régularité des examens, donc d'examens réguliers. Ma question est, quelle fréquence avez-vous à l'esprit lorsque vous parlez d'examens réguliers Dr. Woodlina, I would like to respond to your Honor's question. In reference to paragraph 46 of Don Chu Jiri's report, we recommend that nous recommandons effectivement Nun Jie, cognitive functions should be regularly reviewed. D'examiner régulièrement les fonctions cognitives de Monsieur Nun Jie. I receive uh, a report from the Khmer Soviet Friendship Hospital. This is a weekly report, and I have never seen mental condition has the regularly reviewed. Je Only pas physical vu condition que santé has been examined. Face l'objet d'un examen régulier, l'on examine uniquement l'examen ou l'état de santé, plutôt l'état de santé physique. It is wise to review non mental condition once a month or once in every two months. une fois tous les deux mois. And I believe that ECC uh, asked the doctors to review the mental condition of Mr. Nunjia annually. De faire, de procéder à cet examen une fois par an. When you read uh, the the paragraph 46, I I believe that uh, we uh, recommend that uh, the specialist, uh, specialized doctor should uh, review cognitive function of uh, Mr. Nguyen Chia regularly and based on the specialized skills. Régulièrement. And I observed that the report uh, of Mr. Nguyen Chia's mental condition uh, refer to only general condition Parce without mentioning the specific uh, cognitive condition of uh, the accused Nguyen Chia. When I talk to the treating doctor or duty doctor about Mr. Nguyen Chia's mental condition, I received the reply that uh, Mr. Nguyen Chia's mental condition is normal. That is why I the treating doctors uh, put such a note in the reports. Les médecins traitants uh, once again, uh, in, the, in paragraph 46 of the report, de la façon dont ils uh, uh, cognitive function of uh, Mr. Nguyen Chia should be reviewed Mais at least once a year. So this is my uh, brief, uh, uh, response. Uh, just to clarify for me. Perhaps it is a translation la juge issue, but Fens, alors peut-être ai-je mal compris heard, dans should, la recommandation was once a year. Before that, you said once every month or mais every two months. Mais vous avez dit auparavant une fois par mois, une fois tous les deux mois. C can we clarify that? Alors à quelle fréquence souhaitez-vous que cet examen ait lieu? Answer. Réponse. I said uh, once a year. J'ai dit une fois par an is to comply uh, an, with the order by uh, the trial chamber as uh, we are appointed here uh, to assess his cognitive fun function. Chambre. We were assigned to assess his mental condition in 2014, 13, 14, and 15. And this, is, can, this can be considered a regular review. And in addition to uh, 
Mais c'est cette fréquence qui the a review été of his uh, cognitive function once a year. Mr. Nguyen Chia, cognitive function should be review, review uh, additionally once uh, a month or once in every three months to make it complete for our information. And as I said, I talked to the treating doctors of um, Mr. Nguyen Chia, and uh, I received the reply that uh, the cognitive function of Mr. Nguyen Chia has not degenerated. That is why uh, she or he does not need assistance from uh, Khmer Soviet uh, Friendship Hospital to review, to specifically review uh, Mr. Nguyen Chia's cognitive function. Pour examiner les fonctions cognitives de l'accusé. And I recommend that uh, there should be a doctor from uh, Khmer Soviet uh, Hospital specialized in the cognitive function to review regularly once a month or once every two or three months so that uh, we have uh, full information during the time that we conduct uh, cognitive function annually for Mr. Nguyen Chia. So let me sum up and see if I understood you correctly. Apparently, the two compris. of you are recommending is a yearly assessment which covers everything physical and uh, uh, mental, bilan de santé and additionally to that, et um, en sus de uh, cela, well, one, two or three monthly assessment of cognitive functions, functions which can be done locally. Now, provided this is correct, um, do we have ici. the capacities locally to do these Maintenant, assessments? Avons -nous les capacités au niveau local pour pouvoir mener à bien cette évaluation des fonctions cognitives? Meaning, do we have doctors who can do it? Avons-nous des docteurs qui pourraient ausculter Monsieur Nuanchia et faire uh, cet examen? Uh, to my knowledge, yes. There are specialists in psychiatry, and I believe there are 30 or 40 experts in this field. And also, there are some of these specialists working at the Khmer with the Friendship Hospital. And they're able to carry out uh, these assessments. I believe it is better that there should be a regular uh, report in supplementary to the uh, weekly physical assessment. Because this uh, weekly or monthly medical report does not include the details of the cognitive function assessment. Thank you. 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 Is three months enough for the beginning? Every three months. Is it possible that in a first time, every three months would be enough frequency? Réponse. I believe this is based on the uh, actual situation, but I believe a, a better actuelle, regular assessment is uh, better. Je pense For that que reason, it would be ideal to have a monthly assessment. Une évaluation and par if mois it cannot be done, then uh, an assessment every sinon, three months is also a good start. Un examen tous les trois mois. Thank you. I'm now moving on to question. Je passe maintenant à Monsieur um, Kusampan. When it came to physical conditions, you looked at his history. Vous avez étudié ses antécédents au niveau de la santé physique. Le président intervient. Uh, Council for Kusampan, you may proceed. La défense de Monsieur Kusampan a la parole. Oui, merci Monsieur le Président. 
Euh, je suis désolée d'interrompre euh, Madame le juge Fentz, je tenais simplement à faire une observation. observation. Euh, nous, avons à euh, euh, nous avons indiqué à la Chambre, euh, déjà euh, dans le cadre de nos échanges, qu'il y a un certain nombre de euh, détails relatifs à euh, euh, la situation de santé euh, de M. Kiosampan, nous Mr. estimons Kiosampan's devoir euh, euh, être préservé en termes de secret médical. Nous avons jusqu'à présent laissé uh, la latitude, uh, parce que nous estimons que c'est important effectivement pour la procédure que euh, les experts puissent de façon générale général résumer euh, leur position et euh, indiquer qu'ils considèrent que M. Kusampan est apte à être jugé. J'anticipe euh, à la fin, je ne sais pas quelles seront les questions euh, que les euh, juges vont poser ni que les parties vont poser. Jusqu'à présent, les questions de Mme le juge Fens concernant M. Nyanchea ne nous apparaissent pas problématiques, mais je tiens à indiquer que si nous estimons que nous rentrons trop dans le détail de certains aspects du rapport d'expertise ou certaines questions, nous attirerons l'attention de la Chambre pour demander lui que. Donc je tenais à faire cette observation à titre liminaire, mais jusqu'à présent, il n'y a pas de difficulté. To hold these hearings in camera. Yeah, thank you. I'll, I'll be as, as general as I was with. Merci. With, um, Je serai la plus générale possible. Je ferai exactement comme le juge comme pour Monsieur Manchia. Uh, arrived at their conclusion. Uh, Beck, uh, you looked at his history. Je reviens à ses antécédents. Um, basically high blood pressure and asymptotic What does that mean? Um, your Honor, it, it just meant that the uh, thyroid gland is not producing sufficient thyroid hormone. Il n'y a pas suffisamment d'hormones produites par la thyroïde de M. Kiosampan. Vous parlez également d'AVC, d'accident cérébro. Il s'agit d'attaque cardiaque, n'est-ce pas Oui. Un autre en mai 2008, je vois qu'il a subi en mai 2008 un nouvel AVC, qu'il a été hospitalisé pendant un mois pour une infection des bords respiratoires en 2009. Il a également été consulté pour des problèmes d'oreilles et d'audition. Il a été hospitalisé en 2013 pour une infection des barres respiratoires. Il a subi une intervention chirurgicale de la cataracte. Vous dites que depuis la dernière évaluation, il a été hospitalisé par trois fois, en mars, mai 2014 et plus récemment en janvier 2015. Apparemment, il souffrait de fatigue, d'hypotension, de fièvre, il a eu une bronchite aiguë. Who basically had nothing special to add. The detention, the treatment doctors said that the patient was not getting better. 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 The patient was vous mentionnez également le fait que M. Kiosampo a fait des exercices de mental health à l'écart All of the or none of the um, agencies questioned mentioned anything uh, specific or extraordinary. Rien d'extraordinaire n'est mentionné. Uh, the was that his memory was fine. He could remember his recent euh, event des like the menu, menu for instance, during lunch time. Se souvenait bien. He said sometimes he couldn't remember euh, what he did last week or yesterday. Des choses. Parfois, il ne se souvenait specific. pas de ce qu'il avait fait la veille, mais en général, sa mémoire était bonne. Um, issues otherwise. Now, I want now to move from, and this is about Kyo Sampang, Toujours from à propos de M. Kyo Sampang, to the well, by now it's three incidents we had last week. We all know that we had to adjourn early because Kyo Sampang wasn't able to follow proceedings any longer. We had one of those incidents in on the 8th of January, one on the 21st of January and the last one as recently as yesterday. And we had asked you to supplement your report in commenting on these incidents. And I will now ask you to shortly summarize your findings on all three incidents. So I'll, I'll also ask you for the benefit of everybody because, as I said, the third report, the last report, 
does not yet exist in any other language than Khmer. So would you please present your findings on those three incidents? Yes, Your Honor. Now let me first start by commenting on the incidents on the 12th of January where he was um, where the court was adjourned and he was subsequently brought to hospital. We reviewed um, the daily medical records of uh, Mr. Q and we found that on the morning of the trial date uh, namely the 12th of January his blood pressure was 150 over 90, which is higher than his usual blood pressures, as we checked through his previous records. His pulse rate was 112, again, much higher by any standards and higher than his usual pulse rate. And, um, of course, when he was brought into hospital, they realized that his oxygen was so-called insufficient. Uh, the saturation was uh, 93 or 94. Um, and after a variety of tests, um, he was started on some intravenous injection antibiotics. Um, and subsequently, the blood pressure, pulse, everything normalizes. Now, looking back at this particular incident, uh, firstly, I do not think that the blood pressure was the cause of his problem. I think at the start of the trial, he was already beginning to feel unwell. Um, although, when we asked Mr. Q Sompon, he said that he was well that morning. Uh, that's why uh, our conclusion was that he, at that point in time, he probably has what we call a subacute chest infection. It was not severe enough to cause a rise in temperature nor severe enough to cause him feel breathless or unwell, but the vital signs are showing it in the sense that his pressure and his pulse rate were not normal compared to his usual. And uh, of course, with a course of antibiotics treatment in the hospital, he recovered, and the subsequent x-rays and the subsequent oxygen levels uh, in his body went back to normal, and his normal is 97-98%. So that's my comment on the incident on the 12th of January. Now, the second incident was on the 21st of January. Il a eu lieu le 21 um, janvier. And because of that, uh, both Dr. Hood and myself came down to interview the medical center doctor as well as Mr. Q himself on the 22nd. Le 22 janvier. And uh, we interviewed him and he said that um, at the start he felt well. And we also noted that his blood pressure that morning was 100, uh, was about 140 over 70, uh, with a heart rate, with a pulse rate of 82. Uh, and, uh, and when he felt unwell in the afternoon, sorry, uh, I, I beg your pardon. I, I don't have the um, the email that I sent off as a supplementary report. Uh, it will be good for me to have that so that I can be more specific with his blood pressure. 
concernant May I ask one of the legal officers to provide la juge le choix de l'email to Monsieur de Dianse pourra-t-il fournir une copie de l'email concerné à l'expert um, Monsieur Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. Now, um, Merci, Madame la Juge. His, uh, his blood pressures on the morning of the trial Le matin, on the 21st of January was 135 over 70 and his pulse rate was 76 minutes, per minute and both were normal 76. by his usual standards. The oxygen saturation was 98%. Again, that was normal. Uh, there was no mention about what his respiratory rate was uh, that morning. However, when he felt unwell and when the court was adjourned at 3.30 in the afternoon, his vital signs were taken at 4 p.m. by the attending duty doctor. His blood pressure was 140. Over 70, his pulse rate was 82 per minute, his oxygen saturation was 95% and that is still normal for someone of his age. Again, no respiratory rate was recorded. So again, for that uh, second incident, um, a uh, blood pressure of 140 over 70, which is just 5 mm mercury higher than what he had in the morning, uh, could have caused him such uh, to be so symptomatic as uh, to call for an adjournment of the court proceedings. When we interviewed him uh, on the 22nd of January, uh, he was able to recount his, uh, his, uh, what happened the day before. And the thing that came out most strongly was the complaint of fatigue that he felt in the afternoon. Uh, in his own words, uh, as accurately as I can recall, he said that si if the morning session si was to end by 11.30, then he would have enough time for his lunch as well as a short break pour se to rest, to lie down. Pour and moment. if he has that, et then Si he has possible, no problem continuing the afternoon session. Uh, I've actually made note of that in my report because that was what he said. And as a geriatrician, uh, and of course with my colleague, dit, um, Dr. Hood, uh, we felt that it is not unreasonable for someone of his age, uh, being 84 years old and with his uh, known uh, physical conditions of hypertension, history of strokes and chronic bronchitis, uh, to feel fatigue and as a result of the fatigue, to cause him to feel dizzy and to cause him to feel weak and unable to continue. Uh, at this point, I would like to make a general statement about hypertension, high blood pressure. Um, usually, or, 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 or rather, if we look at all the medical literature about high blood pressure, you have no symptoms of high blood pressure. And although many lay people would associate their dizziness, their headache, 
to blood pressure, there is actually no medical correlation. Uh, certainly, a blood pressure of 140 over 70 uh, would not have accounted for that discomfort. And therefore, uh, on the second incidence, I do not think that his blood pressure was the cause. Um, it is likely that uh, it is his physical fatigue that has taken his toll. Considering also that he had just been discharged from hospital, uh, suffering from an infection of his chest requiring injection antibiotics, uh, even though the, the uh, normal parameters that we use to gauge uh, whether a person has fully recovered from that infection, namely we look at the white cell counts, we look at uh, a, a biochemical parameter called C-reactive protein, CRP, we look at the x-rays, they have all normalized, so effectively the person has been treated and cleared of the infection, but the toll of the infection on the body persists. And in older people, sometimes uh, they will take a week or two before they fully recover their constitution, uh, so to speak. Um, so that, that, that is my comment on the incident uh, of the 21st of January. Now, for the incident um, yesterday, uh, when I checked his, when, when we visited him, when I checked his blood pressure um, myself, it was in the holding cell, he was at the holding cell when I checked his blood pressure. It was 140 over 70 with a, a pulse rate of 82. And at that time, his respiratory rate was 18. Now, based on the report uh, right in front of me and uh, with the contents, some of the contents being interpreted to me by Dr. Hood. Monsieur Hood his blood pressure when he felt unwell was 160 over 90. Il se sentait mal, sa his était de respiratory 16, rate was 84 uh, uh, de per minute. 84. Uh, sorry, uh, beg your pardon. His pardon. pulse rate was 84 per coup. minute and his de respiratory rate minute. was 28 per minute, which is much higher than his usual. Uh, there was also a figure of 9, uh, presumably under the section on oxygen saturation. So whether it was 90 or 90-something, I, I don't know, because there was only a number 9 that was written down there. So obviously, at that point in time, yes, the blood pressure has risen 160 over 90, but uh, I do not think that that, again, is a cause, because 160 over 90 is still not symptomatic uh, for most patients. I say most because I cannot generalize that to Mr. Q. Uh, if we look at the medical literature, when we talk about a blood pressure that is symptomatic enough to cause dizziness and uh, headaches and so forth, weakness, then we are looking at a blood pressure of 180 over 100 or 110 diastolic. So this is still well below that symptomatic range. But of course, uh, 
we are dealing with an individual and different people may have different tolerance to blood pressure. But it's interesting to note that his respiratory rate is 28. Now, when one is excited, uh, when one talks uh, in a very excited manner and uh, in the course of our two, day, two days that we interviewed Mr. Q, um, when we touch on certain points, he was very uh, passionate about defending himself, explaining himself, and he can be hyper ventilating, which is a normal response when one is gets excited. Uh, uh, an increase in blood pressure is also a normal response when one gets excited. Uh, even doing mental arithmetic can cause the blood pressure to go up. So at the end of or during a trial session with a pressure of 160 over 90, uh, my conclusion is that yes, it is high, but it may be really high depending on what was being discussed, what was he being questioned about uh, at that point in time. And when one gets work, worked up and when we start to hyperventilate, uh, physiologically the body breathes fast and when we tend to blow out the carbon dioxide in the body, then the arteries in the brain will constrict and we will get dizzy because uh, we get excited, we hyperventilate, we get dizzy. And when carbon dioxide in the blood goes down because we were hyperventilating, then our blood becomes sang, more alkaline and that binds up the calcium in our system and it affects our muscles, it causes cramps, it causes the tremors and the trembling that each time we, we, we heard him complaining about. Uh, and and uh, although we have not witnessed Monsieur it ourselves, but based on the history, uh, we find that it is likely that in the process of physical fatigue, in the process of being very excited and involuntarily we hyperventilate, he develops this dizziness as well as the cramps and the tremors that he was uh, experiencing during that time. Uh, so that's my assessment of the third incident. Thank you. Um, thank you. I have first two questions to clarify what you just said and then two follow-up questions. questions pour, uh, first of all, and for the record, when did de you suivi. Tout uh, take the vitals yesterday and when, according to the report, were the vitals taken in the afternoon? Um, I, I took the uh, record of his blood pressure in the morning when he was in still in his holding cell. I cannot remember the exact time, but it Je must be nine, nine something in the morning. And does the report about the afternoon incident mention a time? Et le rapport produit pour l'incident de l'après-midi mentionne-t-il l'heure à laquelle l'attention a été prise l'après-midi Yes, uh, yes I have the, the time for the morning. I took Alors, the blood pressure at 9.15 and the uh, medical report, uh, the doctor revealed him at 3 in the afternoon. On voit que le médecin l'a consulté à nouveau à 15 heures l'après-midi. La juge, merci. I note that the four parameters mentioned uh, in all the incident reports are blood pressure, vous avez parlé des pulse rate, à en compte, respiratory la tension, rate, and le, oxygen saturation. La fréquence coup, la fréquence la saturation now you already explained symptoms of blood pressure and 
respiratory rate variations? Vous avez expliqué qu'il pouvait y avoir euh, us, des différences, des variations au niveau de la fréquence du flux, de la fréquence respiratoire, de la tension. So Il est possible what, what, d'attacher certains symptômes à une saturation d'oxygène uh, anormale? Vous pouvez yes, vous dire si um, certains the, éléments peuvent être considérés comme anormaux, comme des symptômes? Uh, when we say low oui, for someone si basse, of his age at 84, uh, we are really exemple, looking at âge, below 92%. En, en de 92% um, en tout cas. I, I believe, as I oui, uh, read through all his daily reports, there were none that had... Uh, that were below 92%. Of course, if Sampan, we lack oxygen, um, oxygen one of the symptoms would have been breathlessness. Uh, it, it also goes uh, to say that uh, it doesn't mean that every complaint of breathlessness means that oxygen is low, because breathlessness um, is a very subjective uh, symptom. Um, um, and there were times when the oxygen saturations were normal and yet the person Parfois, still complains of breathlessness and vice versa. Uh, as for the pulse rate, uh, a high pulse rate again uh, depends on the sensitivity of the individual to his own body. Um, sometimes uh, cerné, the person may not even know that the pulse rate is high uh, and sometimes they may feel uh, palpitations, Parfois, they can feel the heart pounding in the chest uh, when they have a high pulse rate. Alors, la fréquence du coup, I noted that you repeatedly, when you described the parameter, juge, used words like usual, normal, vous employez des mots comme d'habitude, normalement, symptomatique, ça je comprends bien. Uh, is, is it possible to give a range of Pouvez-vous donner une fourchette de ce qui est normal ou habituel Et ce, pour chacun des paramètres mesurés, par exemple, dans le cas de que Sampan, compte tenu de son âge, ou bien est-ce que c'est impossible um. Réponse. Yes, generally, uh, we look oui. at a cutoff of en général, 140. Le seuil, uh, anything up to 140, de we cela, can consider that as on normal. Que normal. Um, above 140 to maybe 160. Entre 160 um, in the literature, we consider that as stage 1 hypertension or mild hypertension. Légère. So above 160, then 160, we consider là, that as moderate and severe would be 180 de, and above. And uh, for the diastolic, uh, 90 again is a uh, top normal of the normal diastolic blood pressure. Pour, uh, la uh, pression if you are looking at someone who is uh, hypertensive, then we are looking at... 90 to 95, and uh, 95 to 100 would be uh, mild, above 100 will be moderate, and above 120 will be severe hypertension. When we, sorry, Your Honor, can I can I continue? Madame la juge, puis-je poursuivre? When when we when we look at the blood pressures of a person and en decide whether they are hypertensive or not, uh, it is the resting si blood pressure. Il faut it is a blood pressure when they have been at rest physically and mentally for 15 minutes at least on three readings. Et ce, uh, uh, if if we are just looking at someone uh, who feels unwell si uh, out of a courtroom after all the exchanges and we check the blood pressure, we do expect it to be high and this would eh bien, have been a normal physiological response to the circumstances. Last question. Arrive à mon ultime question. Uh, and this pertains to the schedule. Elle porte you already mentioned sur le that calendrier des audiences. You recommended. Vous avez déjà dit um, 
an extended lunch break. Recommander so basically, une pause de déjeuner plus longue. shave off one hour, fr uh, half an hour from the morning session. Now, On raccourcirait d'une demi-heure la séance is, du matin. And the no, let me first back up. You have made it clear, both of you, that Tous deux the conditions of none of the accused will improve. Dit que la so santé we might be confronted with the donc, need in the future to further reduce. Should that be the case? Les heures from your point of view, from the medical point of view, medical, does it make more sense to shorten the days in a week or shorten the hours in a day? Meaning, does it make more sense to go three full days, for instance, to allow for a longer rest period, but to stay with four days, just limit the potentially further the number of hours in the day? Or should we limit the number of hours in the day? Or should we limit the number of hours in the day? Or should we limit the number of hours in the day? Or should we limit the number of hours in the day? Or should we limit the number of hours in the day? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I think it makes uh, more sense for for us to give him more rest during the day of the trial rather than to have three days uh, of activity and four days of rest. Thank you. That concludes my questioning. President, thank you very much, Judge Fens, and Mr. Experts. It is now time for a break. You may now have the floor, the International Court of Prosecutors. Very quickly, Your Honor, it's probably completely my fault. I didn't quite get the last answer. The witness, I believe, said which was better, the fewer days per week or the number of hours per day. And if I did understand correctly, he said better to shorten the day. I had four days a week. Let me see if I understood it correctly. 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 Si moi j'ai bien compris, c'est exactement le contraire. Il est préférable, nous dit-on, que les accusés puissent se reposer plus longtemps pendant la journée, tout en maintenant un certain nombre de journées, plutôt que de limiter le nombre de jours d'audience par semaine. Ai-je bien compris Le docteur Kim Ming Chan, exactement. President, it is now a convenient time for a break. Le moment est venu d'observer une pause. The chamber. Take break from this time until 10:50. During the break time, uh, court officer, you are Monsieur instructed to facilitate a proper place for Mr. Experts and have them return before 10:11. The court is adjourned. Suspension of the audience.